that this gathering takes place on indigenous lands, including the unceded territories of the Mississaugas, of the New Credit, the Windot, and the Anodeshani people. We do more than honor the First Nations. We join in the fight for justice, recognizing that there can be no real reconciliation without restitution. That entails seizing the assets of the big resource corporations and returning them to the commons. Woo! This rally is sponsored by Socialist Action and is endorsed by parents of black children, Peel Region Labour Council, the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, ACORN, Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now, University of Toronto at Mississauga Student Union, the Ontario Coalition Against Poverty, Spring Socialist Magazine, and No Pride in Policing Coalition, the NDP Socialist Caucus, and the Workers' Action Movement. <laughs> Peel has been an epicenter of COVID-19 and an epicenter of racism. Sadly, it seems these things, two things, go hand in hand. On the streets and in the schools of Peel, discrimination and police violence evoke mass outrage. On June the 17th, thousands marched from the courthouse in Brampton to school board's headquarters in Mississauga to demand change. Socialist Action proudly participated in that march, and here today many groups are united in our determination to crush racism by any means necessary. My name is Elizabeth Weiss. I'm a retired member of the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, Federal Treasurer of the NDP Socialist Caucus, and the leading member of Socialist Action, and past Secretary of the Toronto and York Region Labour Council. And I will be the chair for this rally. I hope you enjoy it. Please take opportunity to buy some literature off our table, describe, subscribe to our monthly newspaper, Socialist Action, the best publication of its kind in North America. If at any time you decide you would like to join SA, please fill out the form at the display table or visit our website at www.socialistaction.ca or just give us a call at 647-986-1917. Now, it is my honor to call on a dear friend, comrade, socialist hip-hop, to perform a piece for us. So please welcome Mohammed Ali Amir. Because they got me putting rent up on my visa. Sky is the limit. They don't want to see us reach it. They want to keep us down. They want to keep it secret. The people, united, will never be defeated. All the way at the top, they don't see it. Champagne by the leaders, my leaders, elitist. Sick of broken treaties. I'm sick of how they treat us. The people, united, united will never be defeated. My name is Muhammad Ali, the socialist vocalist. If you want to see more of my stuff, add socialist hip hop on all social media. I have a very simple, straightforward, anti-racist message for y'all. I think y'all may know this, and I want y'all to sing along once you figure it out. Let's try one more time, one time real quick, though. You gotta make racists afraid again. When I say make racists, y'all say afraid again. Make racists afraid again. Make racists afraid again. Gotta make racists afraid again. Mega hat racists afraid again. Gotta make racists afraid again. Mega hat racists afraid again. Gotta make racists afraid again. Make. Racist. Afraid again. First verse in a sermon. Its purpose is to serve us. Racists who are served that they never would serve us. Saying every person in a turban is a serpent making serve we have serpents. Serpents on the perfectum. We've been Plymouth Rock, El Haj Malik Shabazz. Been standing rock, no pipeline on this path. Been Willie Lynch, that's WB Du Bois. Lesson of oppression lies in wise and house. Mike Brown in the Mike Pence in the White House got the kids in cages. Mike Brown got gunned down with no explanation, no hesitation. We the forsaken for too long. We've been waiting, so we here for the taking. Taking those who spit in silence to task. Taking down white pride worldwide. Taking down all Nazi scumbags. Taking back what's ours. Taking back what's ours. Gotta make racists afraid again. MAGA hat racists afraid again. Gotta make. Racist. Afraid again. Matter hat racist. Afraid again. If you love to hate, man, you're clueless. I don't hate the hate, man, that's useless. I hate the hate that hate produces, because hate is abusive. So here's what the truth is. The truth is subjective. 
You subjugate justice, tool of convenience that's corrupted. And if you won't correct it, then yeah, you guessed it. Truth is, racist shoe fits, wear it. I got brown skin in the game. This ain't a joke, no fairy tale. Emperor wears no clothes. I can see what it's for, but I can also see hope. I need y'all with me, shout out in support. If you with me, put every racist in their place. They got no escape, make them cower in disgrace. Racists afraid, make refugees feel safe. Make no mistake, making racists afraid. Gotta make racists afraid again. MAGA hat racist afraid again. Gotta make racist afraid again. MAGA hat racist afraid again. Cheeky torch racist afraid again. Proud boy racist afraid again. Build the wall racist afraid Proud boy again. Racist. Cheeky torch racist, all them racist. Make racist afraid, afraid again. again. Woo! Muhammad Ali, socialist vocalist. Peace. Love, solidarity, y'all. Woo! Yeah, Thank buddy. you very much, brother. Our next speaker, or our first speaker that was an artist doing hip hop, Kurt Young is the socialist action organizer in Peel region, and he is part of the national leadership of socialist action. He is a member of the Sheet Metals Worker Union, Local 30. Last November, Kurt was one of the two members of the Workers' Action Movement who ran for the top position in the Ontario Federation of Labour. Him and Barry Conway got 36% of the vote of delegates at the OFL, Ontario Federation of Labour, convention last November. So please warmly welcome Comrade Kurt Young. Woo! Hello, brothers and sisters. Hello. Comrades and friends, I am proud to live here in Mississauga, but I am not proud of the racism that stalks the schools, streets, and workplaces of this city. As Elizabeth said, I work in the building trades, and I am sick of seeing reports of a noose hanging at construction sites. Shame. I am angry that black and brown students in Peel are disproportionately suspended, expelled, or pushed into dead-end courses of study. Shame! I am sick of the fact that black people are more likely to be arrested, charged, shot, and killed by the Toronto police. Shame! I am sick of the fact that racialized workers, especially women delivering frontline services, are prime victims of the pandemic. Working people demand an end to systemic racism. We demand an end to the conditions that foster sickness and inequality. Long before COVID-19, the public sector was under relentless attack. Job security was disappearing. The ruling rich spent billions for wars in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, but not for clean water in indigenous communities. They have Dang. lots of cash for corporate mergers and buyouts, but not, uh, but not any defeat uh, to house the homeless. Shame. Today, the world is reeling from economic depression. It's teetering on the brink of climate catastrophe and nuclear holocaust as the new Cold War between the US, China, and Russia is heating up. 1% of the population controls over 50% of the world's wealth. In face of growing inequality and poverty, Canadian bank and mining CBOs reward themselves with multi-million dollar salaries. Robots are replacing workers. Cameras and computers record us everywhere we move. Bosses force us to work around the clock at crappy jobs that don't pay a living wage. Shame. Dictators are on the rise and cops get away with murdering black, brown, and indigenous and mentally ill people. Shame. The Andre, uh, the Andre Campbell, 26, was shot dead in his family's Brampton home in April 6th. He called Shame. the police for help. He suffered from schizophrenia. He posed no threat to anyone. The police who shot DeAndre refused to turn over their notes to this day. Shame. Shame. Ijaz Chandri, a 60-year-old Muslim man, was fatally shot by police in his Mississauga home. Ijaz suffered a mental crisis on June 20th. He posed no physical threat to anyone. In March, the Peel District School Board issued a trespass notice against Idris Orogu, a community activist, on September 23rd. The Peel Board publicly apologized to Idris. 
They admitted that banning him from all board properties was racist. We have parents here today to tell us what the board refused to hear from Aegis and as well as them. Do you remember Regis Kinsinski Paquette? She was a black indigenous 29 year old woman who plunged to her desk from her 24th floor uh, High Park building while several cops occupied her tiny family apartment. Play six. Where is the uh, justice for Regis? Justice for Regis! Justice for Regis! Justice for Regis! Justice for Regis! We are inundated by steady stream of lies from bosses, bureaucrats, and their right bought and sold politicians. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau lies daily and not just about the weed charity scandal. He lies on climate change, indigenous rights, electoral reform, taxation, civil liberties, and military spending. The Trudeau agenda is a Stephen Harper agenda behind a cloud of weed smoke. Shame. On matters of imperialist war, pipelines, and trade, Trudeau is capitulating to Trump. But the working class is fighting back. We are inspired by mass protests against killer cops, by the campaign to raise the minimum wage, and by young workers fighting for job security and decent living. We draw inspiration from Idle No More, from Black Lives Matters, and from climate justice movements. We say it's time for the working class to reject labor concessions and remove labor officials who serve the capitalist system. It's time to rise up. It's time to break the chains that bind us to a system rooted in oppression, war, eco-disaster, and untold misery. The ruling rich aim to reverse the concessions made to workers during the current pandemic. To hell with that. We refuse to go back. We demand permanent pay, uh, pay increases, safe working conditions, and public ownership of all long-term care facilities. We say nationalize big oil, the giant telecoms, and the big banks. We demand disarm, disfund, disband the police, free public transit, tax the rich, free post-secondary education, fund human needs, not fighter jets, Hands off Venezuela. Viva, viva Palestina. Woo! One more time. Viva, viva, viva Palestina. Palestina. Viva, viva Palestina. Raise the minimum wage to $20 an hour. We demand a living income for all, an eco-socialist Green New Deal, freeze rent, no COVID evictions, and quality housing and child care for all those who need it. Local politicians like Mayor Bonnie Crombie and Patrick Brown try to talk a good game, but they do little to fix the problems that plague the working class. Body cams won't stop police brutality. Only police controlled by the working class and oppressed communities can begin to uproot a systematic racism. We know our history. The first police in North America were runaway slave catchers. But what we need to do is catch the runaway corporate criminals who exploit farm workers, warehouse courier, and frontline workers, and seniors in private for profit long term care facilities. We are going to achieve this by applying greater pressure to the bosses and their agents in the government. We need more protests like the one we're holding today. Woo! Socialist Action has a concrete proposal for the next municipal election. We call on the NDP, which is based on the unions, to run openly for city council and school board, and to advance the demands of black, Asian, and indigenous workers who are fed up with racist cops, bigoted school administrators, and inferior housing, transportation, and health conditions. If the NDP refuses to run openly on that basis, we urge the formation of a big coalition to do the job. We call on black parents, labor unions, tenants, migrant workers, students, housing campaigners, free transit advocates, socialists and progressives to unite and fight for workers' workers' agenda in the 2022 city election. None of our demands can be won and secured without a workers' government. 
An NDP government would be a small step forward. Emphasis on the small. <laughs> but to lead the fight for a real workers' government, we need a revolutionary workers' party. That is what socialist action is all about. If you want to change the world, now is the time to get directly involved. Let us smash racism. Bring workers to power. And you can do all that by joining socialist action. Thank you. My name is Kurt. Thank you for having me. Uh, Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kurt. Wow. Okay, our next speaker is Sister Kathy McDonald. She's a proven leader of the black community in Peel, a fighter for justice and top quality education. She has served six years as school trustee for wards three and four Brampton on the Peel District School Board. So please welcome, warmly welcome Sister Kathy McDonald. Yeah. Woo! Right yes, but I need something to clean the mic. It was just there a moment ago. No, it's, it's in the bag. It's in the bag, the black bag there. Yeah. Kurt's being interviewed right now. I think I think it was. I thought he put it in the bag. That's a new. That's a new one. That's fine. Okay. COVID conditions. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So for me, before I begin, because for me it's all about the students. I want to start off with a powerful poem by a student. Please welcome Naomi McDonald. They say no more slavery and that we walk hands in hands. We march, we kneel, and we take a stand. I hear white folks say anti-black racism has come to an end. Then why do they say that we have life behind bars? We gangsters, we dumb, we belong in cop cars. Happened yesterday, why still happening today? When it comes to anti-black racism, why the big delay? You may think blonde hair, blue eyes means you are pretty and will succeed. Love dark cocoa skin, I am black, why you call me ugly? I'm taught to be fearless, be bold and be tearless. It's like a bullet in my mind. No one is designed to be slaves or birds trapped in a cage. Anti-black racism happens every day. We need to make change now. We say that for years. Ow! You get hurt, they ask you okay? I black get whipped. You look straight past me. You laugh, watch me cry while I boil up inside. Watch the fire in my eyes. Why is my wrist always under attack? You strike me now, but I can't fight back. Not because I ain't strong. But if I fight back, the police surround me with guns. Whose fault is it? They say it's the black one. Happened yesterday. Why still happening today? When it comes to anti-black racism, why the big delay? I'm tired, filled with pain, hurtfulness, and sorrow. I'm told anti-black racism will end. Just wait until tomorrow. Years have passed. Learned so much about European settlers. Um, why the whites acting like predators? In classes, students talk about dreams and ways to succeed. Once the black students are in their overlook and forced to yell, blacks can achieve. What makes me different from you? I love the skin I'm in. You hate me, why? Because of my extra melanin? Yeah, I face barriers, challenges, discrimination. All my life, I want to stop and solve the situation. But so far, no one has answered my equation. That's why I'm standing here today, looking for a railroad to show my people the way to true freedom. Happened yesterday, why still happening today? When it comes to anti-black racism, why the big delay? Thank you. Woo! And excuse me for being a little biased because that's my daughter, so you know, I'm very proud of you. Woo! And it, it took me by surprise because she wrote it after the George Floyd incident. And it, it's just amazing what our young people can do. And unfortunately, too many of our young people have their first negative interactions with police in our schools. 
and that is why I am committed to make a change. From the moment black students in particular and indigenous students enter the education system, a lot of them are tagged, they're labeled, and they're ordained as thugs, as people that won't achieve anything. But I'm excited that at the Peel District School Board, big things are happening and I'm very confident in the change that is to come under new leadership. We're moving in the right direction. While I believe that we do need the police, I think that there's a serious need to revamp the entire organization to best serve us. It is unacceptable to be coming into our schools and arresting a kid when the only description you have is a black youth with a black jacket. Imagine I have to tell my husband and my son when they're taking the subway, stay inside until they find their suspect. Because after all, how many black people are walking around with black jackets? Shame. Now, the police should not be allowed to come into schools and arresting kids for things like six dollars is missing and they suspect them of a robbery especially when no robbery has taken place especially when you come into the school and you hear the story and there is not a robbery situation it is unacceptable because when you handcuff our kids you leave them all day in a cell cold nearly naked and frightened you traumatize kids and it's not something that kids can just flip on and off i have spoken to kids that after one negative interaction they are afraid to even come out of their bedrooms we are traumatizing people to me it's irrelevant of who feels safer because police are in our schools i grew up with schools that were police free so I don't understand the need to have police in our schools, especially if they're there honing their detective skills on the backs of black and indigenous and Hispanic children. That is unacceptable. unacceptable. I am committed to ensuring that all students get the education that they're legally entitled to. Because there seems to be a misconception that as black people we are begging a favor. We are not. We are taxpayers and we pay our taxes so our kids can get an education that they're legally entitled to. I'm committed to ensuring that all school, all students, uh, we inspire success, confidence and hope in them. Our board under new leadership with the amazing Colleen Russell Rawlings and our supervisor, Bruce Rodriguez, will be examining all protocols around police involvement in our schools and empowering our principals and vice principals and building their capacity. So when the police, I'm gonna actually take this off. <laughs> so when the police are telling our principals do not call their parents we are going to develop the capacity so they can say no because as minors entrusted to our care it is important that if the children are missing from our schools that their parents are told about this not wondering where their children are they are minors and their guardians and parents have the right to know where their babies are especially in this uncertain time why are we allowing mothers to go wondering and fretting about their children i think we need to think how we as a society spend our taxpayer dollars we need to ensure that our children in crisis our children with mental health needs do not come face to face with armed personnel but caring, compassionate, trained individuals that are capable of de-escalating, comforting, or providing the necessary supports. We do not need police in our schools honing their skills on our children. I stand before you committed to advocating for all children that they will have the education that they deserve. 
an education free of intimidation and fear, an education that uplifts rather than diminish, an education that will allow them to be the best versions of themselves. Thank you very much. Woo! Thank you. Thank you very much, sister. We are delighted to have our next speaker the and the endorsement of a leading force for equality and fairness in education in Peel, the parents of black children. Sister Charlene Grant is here to speak for parents of black children, so please join me in welcoming Charlene. Hi everyone. Hello. Hello. So, um, so my name is Charlene Grant and I'm from Parents of Black Children in York Region. We actually, we're, we're parents and we go around and we advocate, um, we're a parent group that goes around and advocate for children in the education system, black children. Children who are subjected to racism on a daily basis. So recently we actually formed what's called a system navigator role, which what that means is it's an official role that we go around and we represent and accompany our parents whenever they're dealing with racism within the school or any educational system. It's, it's like the African culture that says the village takes a village to raise a child. So what we are doing, we're, we're doing it in York region, yes. However, no, we are leaving no students behind. We're, we're representing students from all over Ontario. It's a pilot project we're working on in hopes that the government, and lobbying the government to fund it across Ontario. In addition to that, we're empowering parents how to navigate the system themselves. And in that, whenever our children face racism, we're making sure we hold the system accountable. That hurts them. I.e., we are re reporting them if it's a race crime or incident, we're reporting it to the, to the YRP or any police force, that is. If it's an educator that, that um, inflict racial violence on our children, we are making sure we report them to the Ontario College of Teachers, or if it's a human rights or civil case, we're, we're gonna have them do a lawsuit. Our thing is the system has been harming our children for a number of years, and there's been zero accountability. Driving over here, I've already seen two tweets talked about our children um, being called the N-word, and these teachers are not held accountable. The, mo Damn. the most recent one is in Alberta, where the, pr where the principal used the N-word and the student that recorded it got suspended and the principal is still there. Shame. This is, it's, it, it is the type of racial violence that our children face on a regular basis and we're sick of it. We, we, don't, we don't just want our children to survive, they need to strive in the education system. We're tired of the streaming, we're tired of the racial abuse and we're just sick and tired of being sick and tired and crying with our children late at night. It is enough. Enough is enough and we're not taking it anymore. This is our way of fighting back. That's why parents of black children are here to support all, all our black students in the education system. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Thank you. Thank you so much, sister. Our next speaker, who is the president of the Toronto Local of CUPW, Kaiser Roof, was supposed to be here today, but unfortunately he just called and said he couldn't be because there's a crisis at the Gateway plant. And of course, with Canada Post being an employer, crisis is a word that we hear quite often <laughs> with them. Yeah. So, our next speaker is Comrade Y.C. Lee. He represents the movement that leads the LGBTQ movement to disarm, defund, and disband the police. The No Pride in Policing Coalition. And after YC speaks, we're in for a special treat, following his remarks, because YC is also an operating tenor who will sing the Billy Holiday ballad, Strange Fruit. So just a shout out, let you know that um, yes, my speech does contain, contain mature content as does the song, so um, just be mindful of that.
Okay, so uh, no pride in policing.ca. Uh, that's our website. No pride in policing.ca. Just want to uh, mention that because uh, we'd love it if you could sign on to our statement of demands. You can sign on as an individual as well as an organization. NPPC, No Pride in Policing Coalition, is a queer and trans group opposed to anti-black and anti-indigenous racism and the police. Woo! In 2016, the Pride Toronto March was halted by Black Lives Matter's demands. In 2018, No Pride in Policing Coalition was formed after realizing the need for no policing at Pride was important. Woo! Disband the police! Subsequently, NPPC has organized anti-policing events, abolished the police, a pride rally at Nathan Phillips Square in June, and no body cams, defund and abolish the police in July outside Toronto Police Headquarters. Woo! NPPC also has provided outreach and support to Wigwasika, Indigenous encampment to LGBTQ, two-spirit at-risk youth, and to sex workers and community activists Mocha Dawkins in rebuilding her life after police arrested and detained her this summer on false charges. Woo! Well, shame, Most shame. recently, Beverly Bain of NPPC spearheaded a labor action known as Scholar Strike to protest anti-black, racist, and colonial police brutality. And as far as the cops are concerned, law enforcement actually teaches cops to dehumanize. Apparently, people who break the law don't deserve sympathy from police and that the cops are there to make law-breaking as painful as possible. Shame! To really teach the poor a lesson to dissuade them from committing more crime. In police academy, 60%, 60% of training is use of force, physical toughness, and quote-unquote officer safety. Shame. Shame! Early in their training, they sit and watch dash cam footage of police officers being murdered, ambushed, shot to death, on routine traffic stops, and it would be mentally drilled into their heads. Shame. And once their heads are fully brainwashed with cop death, that's when they start with the martial arts and firearms training. Then they start learning the law on how to leverage the maximum amount of force they can get away with. Shame. Cops are allowed to shoot a fleeing suspect if they have probable cause to believe that the suspect presents a deadly threat to other officers or the public. The training teaches cops to be ready and to prepare to kill so that they do not become a victim. So if the legal standard use of force depends on what a reasonable officer would do in that situation, what do you think would be a reasonable response to a cop who has just had one year's worth of training that emphasizes that everyone might just kill you? Cops also see themselves as being above and in charge of the community. The police are reduced to serving and protecting each other, not racialized communities. Shame. Cops operate in a warped hierarchy with three toxic ideologies. One, cops are separate from members of the public. Two, members of the public might try to kill a cop at any time. Three, breaking the law should be as painful as possible to deter a crime. Shame. This type of brutally aggressive mindset is normalized in police culture. Common principle is, you ask, you tell, you make. And cops make you do stuff by beating you up. They make you by towing your family car. They make you by arresting you on flimsy charges because the cops know that even if the charges do not stick, the poor are still the ones who are stuck in jail all weekend. Shame. Many times, cops purposefully shove members of the public into a continuous cycle of debt and incarceration. These cops have purposefully ruined people's lives, maybe permanently because of those choices they're allowed to make. So when you see Louisville Police Department gun down Breonna Taylor in her own bed, what is going on inside these cops' heads is they have ceased to see black people as humans worthy of dignity and respect! Shame! It's been the police! And the only way for them to keep order is to violently punish people to convince the rest of us that deviation from social control will be painful and probably deadly. We have a Shame. system and structure and hierarchies that unjustly harm people. So it is this system that encourages cops to dehumanize people. So it is for these reasons we must defund, disarm, dismantle, abolish. Defund, disarm, dismantle, abolish. Defund, disarm, dismantle, abolish.
southern trees bear a strange fruit blood on the leaves and blood at the root black body swinging in the southern breeze strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees pastoral sea of the gallant south the bulging eyes and the twisted mouth Sweet and fresh Then the sudden smell Of burning flesh Here is a fruit for the crows to pluck, for the rain to gather, for the wind to suck, for the sun to rot, for the trees to drop. He a strange and bitter Wow, thank you so much, comrade. Our next speaker represents Spring Socialist Magazine, where she champions defunding police to rebuild safer public services and safer TTC. She recently spoke on a socialist action webcast on the mental health crisis. Today she will read a couple of her poems. So please welcome Sister Loretta Fisher. Woo! Yeah. Greetings, everyone. Hello. I'm just going to share some of my writing about my life here in Canada. I'm Loretta and I'm Canadian born and I know firsthand the authorities here are often very busy behind the scenes either quietly ignoring the existence of racism or noisily provoking and stirring up the racial hotspots using media so they can stand back and shake their heads or rush in and bust our heads. For capitalists, systemic racism is the most effective strategy to keep workers divided against each other. They know workers are from everywhere. They do not want us to organize and stand up for our rights or fair wages. If only the people would see that we are mighty, we are like mighty and powerful elephants, 
held back by the flimsy chain of fascism. To capitalist corporations and North American governments who pretend to be democratic, xenophobia is another effective division keeping regions and races from acknowledging each other equally. At least a century ago, the masses on the sugar plantations told black slaves they were lucky to even have unpaid labor because pretty soon they're going to be largely replaced with Chinese slave labor. And they tried in some places. Just one example of human beings given more reason to despise each other instead of despising their bosses' underhanded strategies. We've come a long way since then, but the more things change, the more they stay the same. From way back to Bible times, colonialist countries have been stealing land and precious resources and workers' labor to build economy for colonial rulers. Workers play a large part in creating the very substance of our economy, but it's never beneficial to workers, low or even middle class workers. Racism ensures this unfair, unequal status quo. Each and every institution, from our banks to police forces, were solely created to protect these long ago stolen assets that have never been returned to their rightful owners. Police forces were specifically created to ensure armed and violent shutdown of the rights of indigenous peoples. This now includes blacks, indentured workers, immigrants, migrant workers. Then and now, that is what the police are created for. Every law and every court system, system was especially built to protect the elite colonizers. Police are mandated to use excessive force and courts are obligated to prosecute and jail those who dare to stand up for our human rights. Sometimes we're not even standing up for our rights. Sometimes we're walking to our car, sleeping in our bed, jogging down the street, or laying face down in the street with a knee cutting off our air supply. Same. Sometimes we are simply a black youth walking with a group of friends, then suddenly running from two grown men with a metal pipe. Shame. I would say Asante all the Miller. names of the people I'm talking about, but there are too many, named and unnamed. And I have way too much grief, sorrow, rage, and pain, which cannot be contained on any page the human rights of indigenous and black people here in Canada have been under serious attack. Human rights that are so easily afforded to anyone else who is not black. Viola Desmond wasn't daring to stand up. She simply wanted to sit in a seat of her own choosing after she paid for her theater ticket, but ended up being forced to pay fines and sit in a jail cell. Shame. What were her crimes really? Her first crime, I guess, was being black. Her second crime was choosing her own seat after she paid. Her third crime was complaining about the injustice of being arrested for the first two fictitious crimes. Same. That is what the police force and all their deadly weapons and their courts and their prisons are expe expressly created for, to control our movements and to, to not recognize us and to penalize us for complaining. The world economy under capitalism has been designed to promote and protect the colonial rulers who espouse white supremacy. Every educational and every economic theory, every law is about protecting, and protecting the capital and property of the elite ruling class. People in Canada, are royally distracted by how bad U.S. race relations are, failing to notice that this country has a colder mean streak hiding beneath a politer shade of racist hate. Shame. It is still hate, and it's built in homegrown hate right down to our colonialist roots. This horrific history and this ongoing racism should be acknowledged. 
However, that has never been the nature of racism. As I mentioned, I was born in Canada, separated from my bio family, and raised in an all-white community, so I know firsthand how a child, even in elementary school, is forced to absorb racist hatred. In fact, we have just observed the poetry from an elementary school child on this very subject. From at least grade one, I have vivid, startling, and heart-racing memories of meeting people for the first time, suddenly feeling my heart would explode from a hate-filled look directed fully at me for simply standing there. I was literally the only black kid in sight. That laser beam look was always followed by the same eyes looking deliberately away so I would realize how offended they were at the sight of me. Back to Canada's most effective way to sneak in systemic racism in all our institutions. Start early and go wide and always be friendly on the outside. Canada so kindly invited workers from around the globe and congratulate themselves for being so graciously multicultural. But employers do not want us to organize or stand up for our rights, especially not fair wages. This would upset their big financial profit plan which is a huge plan to benefit the few. Sure. Our economy under capitalism was not designed to treat any workers fairly, especially people of color. Capitalists must constantly pretend that it's socialism that will bring chaos. But it's actually socialism that will finally bring an end to this chaos right. and all the crises <laughs> and the capitalist corruption. The upholders of our racist colonial system live in fear that the workers will unite and fight for fair wages. Contrary to popular belief, a one or two dollar raise will not destroy businesses or the economy. But still, wealthy capitalists are wildly opposed to even slightly raising current poverty wages. Capitalists, the richer they are, the more twisted and heartless they become. Mega rich owners are now bold enough to play the ultimate prank on workers by slapping a $2 raise right out of the hands of underpaid but dedicated frontline workers. Shame on Loblaws. Scale and Weston, everybody. Loblaws. Yeah. The goals are to divide, oppress, and control using active bias, prejudice, and exclusion applied bluntly or with ambiguity. Stirring up emotions by stoking the fires of racism is a strategy used historically. The racist elite always profit from promoting wars around the world. Even white supremacists will feel unsatisfied and falsely uplifted since the truth of equal humanity is real. Stoking racism and hatred keeps us blaming each other, pointing fingers, and bringing us to the bitterness of war. All the hate speech and hate crimes distract us from the instig instigators, the real instigators, the oppressive ruling class. Mega corporations grow excessively richer from our painful divisions, making millions off our labor, using our tax money to build more prisons. Shame. Using our tax money to destroy the environment. Shame. Time is up. How do we get rid of the ruling class? All working class people of every race unite. Woo! Stand up together to fight our common enemy, capitalists on the right. It's time for middle and lower class workers to realize their power in unity. Let's stop fighting each other. Racism and xenophobia are the most effective tools used against us. So let's collectively use our power, redirect our strength to push out fascist ruling classes. Woo! All the people need governments led by the people for the people. Woo! I'll end with this question. If it turns out in the end to be between you and a huge corporation, who will they bail out? That's a good question. Woo! Peace. Thanks, Loretta. Woo! Thank you, sister. Yes, who will they bail out? Labor is at the heart of the fight for social justice and equality. 
Brother Ram Silvaraja is an executive member of the Peel Region Labor Council, one of the largest local labor bodies in Canada. So please welcome Brother Ram. Woo! One of the guys, yeah. <laughs> hey man. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And I just want to say a big thank you to Socialist Action for organizing something like this in Mississauga and in Peel in particular. Because I don't recall a time when we have had a rally like this, organized by a group of people coming together, different groups of people. I bring you greetings from the Peel Regional Labor Council. And the, we represent the workers that are in the nursing homes. We represent the workers that are in the grocery stores. We represent the workers that are delivering your mail. We deliver the public service workers who re register your birth and your death. So I want you to know that we are here as a large group of people. And I want to share a personal story. You've heard a lot of stories about defunding the police and stuff. My son is 21 years old right now. When he went to elementary school, the teachers told him, well, you know, the, the safe stay away from strangers. The safe strangers are those with police uniforms and the firemen and the medicals, right? When he went to middle school, they said, you know, we're, stay away from drugs and you want to trust the police and stuff. He went to high school and the police stopped him and carded him and his buddies. Shame. My daughter goes shopping with her friends, multicultural group of kids. The black groups get followed around by the store clerk because you know what? She's the most likely to steal something. Shame, Shame isn't that? Racism. But I want to tell you something. The same teachers that told the kids or taught the kids that the police were safe individuals. Last June, the ETFO, the elementary teachers and the Ontario secondary school teachers at Peel Labor Council brought forward a motion to remove police from schools in Peel. Woo! The very same teachers that said that, they know it's not working out. It needs to change. Things need to change, right? You've heard all about the establishments, but I want to ask each and every one of you to take the anti-racism fight to your own heart. Because we as different communities have been made to stay, fight each other. Be it Muslim community, well, it's the Muslim community that has the barbaric cultural practices. Remember not less one election ago when we were fighting all about uh, the women wearing the hijab or niqab and it was going to ruin Canada, right? Because we couldn't see their faces and we would all be in trouble. What would be the end of us? They would blow us all up. Yet, you know, yesterday I went into my bank wearing a mask and nobody told me otherwise I couldn't go in, right? So no, and no bank got robbed. Nobody blew up. We need to ask those things. We need to tell, we need to take that fight within our own communities. When I first came to Canada, we were told, well, you know, the Indians, as they were called, they would refer to the uh, first indigenous people back about 30 years ago. Well, they get all the facilities from government. You know, they, they don't have to worry about anything. Until I went, I traveled to Ottawa, Piscate, and, uh, and I saw that they had nothing. They had no running water. So Shame. I didn't know where, what they were, all the benefits they're getting. Justin Trudeau, 26, 2015, promised that we would, they would have running water. They would have drinking water. They don't have drinking water. Shame. Right? If this is not racism, what it is. They come up as, oh, well, it's a water problem. Is this thing? No, it's racism because we choose not to help those groups of people. We need to stop the politicians from dividing us. We need to ask ourselves, how are we helping the other community? It's not an indigenous problem. It's our problem when they don't have drinking water, when they don't have access to quality education, right? Woo! It's not a black community problem when the black kids are discriminated against in school. It's our problem because they are my kids' friends. They are our neighbors. It happens to them. It happens to us. It's we should be united. I want to bring you the commitment of the Labour Council. We have asked all our union members to take this fight within their own locals. We want our locals, our members, to have this anti-racism training in each and every local. Because we know, we, as much as we say we are united, we need to have this training. We need to question ourselves and what our values are. Because there is something called implicit bias that nobody talks about. 
it's a bias that we've always been brought up with, but we don't examine it. We think it's racism, it's a police issue, it's an establishment issue. No, we need to make that change ourselves. So I want, when you go home today, ask yourself, just me being having a friend of color or a black person who's a friend of mine, am I being racist? If I am ignoring something that's going on around me, then I am racist. And we need to stop that practice ourselves. So, you know, you've heard a lot. I want you to take that practice. It's one thing at a time. Let us, as a South Asian, one of the things that I've asked in my community is saying, what is our own bias in our own community against the black people? Which the racism is not a general thing. We have to remember that much of the racism is directed against black people and indigenous people, much of it. We as South Asians in some way have been told you are the model citizen, you know, come here, work hard, and you're moving along. My community is doing a lot better, I acknowledge, than the black or the indigenous people. And it is our turn to stand up. So if you're Chinese, you're South Asian, whatever, stand up for those two communities. We need to bring them up. We need to pull them up. We can only go up if we all rise up together. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Solidarity forever. brother. Our next speaker, Peter de Gama, is on the steering committee of the NDP Socialist Caucus and is a tenants' rights activist with ACORN. He was the Socialist Action candidate for City Council in Toronto Ward 1, North Etobicoke. Yeah, you know who's writing that was. In 2018. So welcome, Peter. Woo! Thank you, bro uh, brothers and sisters, friends. Um, I'm, I represent the NDP Socialist Caucus today, and I want to talk to you about how we bring about change. That banner says, defund the police. And we've seen many uh, activists today speak about anti-black racism, uh, racism, uh, racism against indigenous peoples, and the need to build, uh, to defund the police and to build, invest that money in black and indigenous and people of color. Thing is, how do we do that? We, we, uh, we do, uh, the politicians uh, pay lip service to these needs. We do that by coming together and coming together and building a, a force, a political force that can bring about that change. Today, uh, the NDP Socialist Caucus, you heard Brother Kurt say, that, the, uh, that we are calling for a municipal party, ND, calling on the NDP to form a municipal party. And that is urgent. That's what's going to get change in Peel, in Toronto. We need more people like Kathy McDonald in Peel Council and, and school trustees' office. I just want to give you an example of how the status quo uh, blocks change. There was a, a Toronto, Toronto City Council, there was, a, uh, there was a, a motion to defund the police by 10%. It's meager. We in the NDP Socialists called call for defunding by 50%. But any, it, was, it was a step to see how serious politicians were. And how serious were they? They voted against They voted against a meager 10% defunding of police. Shame! And what was the reason? The reason given was that we don't have yet the, the, the funding, uh, for example, in mental health support to, to, to defund the police. We should defund first and then take that money and then and fund mental health support so that police do not, uh, are not the first people uh, uh, coming on to uh, scenes where there is a person in mental health distress. There are other examples that could be funded, like in Seattle and Sweden, where there's special ambulances that uh, uh, set up to treat people 
suffering from mental health distress. So we should be funding that. So it's not an excuse to say we don't have the resources now to support people in mental health distress. Therefore, we still need police to intervene on the scene. We don't need it. We should, we should defund and then support, put that money into mental health and housing and other, and other needs. Woo! The other, the, the other incidents uh, when Ijaz Chowdhury was killed at the hands of the police, there was a, the police held a town hall, telephone town hall. And when the question of why we could not def defund the police, people said, Poli we need to defund the police and invest in social services, in housing, employment. We need to defund police and imagine a better way of uh, for, uh, for public safety. The police chief said that this is not possible. Why? The, the reason he said is that the Peel police is, uh, are underfund, underfunded and undermanned. <laughs> this is ridiculous. The police officer in Peel has a starting salary of $100,000. $100, Shame. And this is an increase, a 41% increase in 2006 when they were earning 71000 this is the same. A police office, police constable makes hundred thousand dollars. A personal support worker, whose uh, whose salary Doc Ford raised by meager make three dollars, makes only twenty dollars, twenty dollars an hour, with the raise about twenty four dollars an hour. Shame. Shame. The, the police budget is four hundred ninety million dollars. There is room to cut the, to defund the police. We need to have a goal of defunding the police by 50 percent. So the NDP Socialist Caucus calls for an NDP municipal party to take these on, to take the cause of defunding the police, investing in social housing, and not just a few units, but thousands, hundreds, of, tens of thousands of Nationalized units per year. housing, yeah, let's fucking do it. And we need to invest in social housing and social services. But there is one caveat in investing in social services. We have to ensure that those social services uh, are divested of anti-black racism. Two examples. In the, the child welfare services, uh, although the, the, the uh, uh, Toronto, Toronto and the greater Toronto population, uh, the black uh, percentage is 9%. Uh, 9 Black children make up make up 42 percent of of children uh, children's aid. This this is this is a shame. This is disgusting. We cannot have black children taken away from their families. So we, the other incident just happened the other day in Quebec when a dying Indigenous woman in a Quebec hospital had to suffer racial insults. Shame. So until the the health services, the children's aid services, and other social ser services are divested of, of this, these racist sentiments that have, have, have its roots in settler colonialism, then we cannot build, we cannot just fund, uh, fund these kind of services. We have to have fund these services that is completely divested of ra racism in these Woo! institutions. And the it. political institution is another institution that is in need of change. And for this, we need a political party. If you go to uh, uh, Toronto City Hall and or Peel uh, City Council, you'll see very few uh, black faces of people of color. This needs to change, but it needs to change on a radical policy, on a rad calling for free transit, greater public housing, a livable wage, jobs for all so if the NDP is not up to the task and they in Peel there are three NDP MPPs Kevin Yard uh, Sarah Singh and Guthrie Singh we need to ask them to start a local uh, municipal party NDP party in, in, in Peel in Toronto to take up the cause uh, to take up these causes. If they're not willing to do it, we will do it. 
we will do. The, co the coalition of people who spoke today, we can form a, par a party uh, to do it. Like they have done, like, uh, like uh, parties have done in Montreal and in Vancouver. So it is possible. So we, we, need, uh, we need this party to build. The election is coming up in 2022. We need to start thinking today uh, how to build this party. And then we can bring change, defund the police, and invest in the important social services. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're nearing the end of our program. We have one more speaker and then a treat for you after that. So, our next speaker is Brother and Comrade Julius Arscott. He's an alternate member of the Ontario Public Service Employees Union Executive Board and Vice President of OPSU Local 532. He is on the steering committee of the Workers' Action Movement, better known as WEM. WEM to the bosses. Please warmly welcome Julius. Woo! Good afternoon, sisters and brothers, comrades and friends. My name is Julius Arscott. I'm the vice president of OPSU Local 532 and alternate, first alternate executive board member for OPSU in Region 5. I think, I think technically I'm in Region 3 right now, and I'll probably hear back from Smokey about what I'm about to say, but also because I'm speaking outside my region, so shame on me, I guess. Anyway. Woo! That's never stopped me in the past and it won't stop me in the future. Rules are for losers. Sisters and brothers, first of all, I want to talk about a dear sister comrade of, of ours in the Workers' Action Movement, Sandra Griffith Bonaparte. Sandra is a longtime president of her union local, uh, 12 years actually, of the Public Service Alliance of Canada. She emigrated to Canada in 19, 1988 from Grenada and was considered and is considered an outstanding and dedicated. Uh, leader of her local to her members. Her articulate persona attracted envy and hatred from some white members of her region in her union. Sandra received accolades as a union spokesperson and educator on subjects like Black History Month. Her bigoted opponents, mostly from outside her local, could not block Sandra democratically, so they fil filed false charges of harassment against her. Shame. Shame. But the reality of the situation was that Sandra was in fact the victim of years of harassment. Her complaints against her harassers were rejected by the UNDE, which later hauled Sandra before an all-white internal union tribunal, deprived her of due process, found her guilty, removed her from elected office, and barred her from holding any position in the UNDE or PSAC for 10 months. Shame! The union and the vast majority of members are suffering as a result of this injustice. These actions cannot be tolerated in our labor movement. We demand a reversal and full apology to Sandra Griffith Bonaparte. Woo! 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 Sandra's false accusers and complicit union officials of the UND, UNDE and PSAC should be held accountable. After all, an injury to one is an injury to all. Yes. Woo! I want to talk a little bit about the Workers' Action Movement. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders. We uh, started in 2017 in my own union, OPSU, uh, over issues of union democracy and the need to fight concessions bargaining. How many folks here are in a union or have had experience in a union? Folks in unions know every time a new contract comes around, we lose more and more. Concessions bargaining is the norm. It has been the norm now for decades, and we see Every day, poverty around us. Being in the union, it's not like what it used to be. So our key issues in the Workers' Action Movement involve mobilizing the membership to win. No concessions bargaining. No more two-tier. Fight the attack on pensions, benefits, and wages. Create a more democratic and accountable and transparent labor movement. And for solidarity with workers everywhere. We fight systemic racism. Systemic racism is as part of the labor movement as it is in the greater part of society, and we need to, we need to acknowledge that. The leadership of our labor movement 
does not reflect the diversity of our society and the diversity of our members. And that's sure. a shame. Sure. In 2019, at the Ontario Federation of Labour Convention, WAM launched a campaign. We ran several candidates and were very successful. There is a huge appetite for change in our workers' movement. We played a leading role in defeating a constitutional amendment to hold the OFL convention every three years instead of the existing two years. And why would the leadership want to have a bigger delay between conventions? Because they don't want to be held accountable. That's why leaders want big gaps between when they're selected, because they're afraid of the membership. We ran candidates, as I said. We ran Barry Conway from QP Local 5167 for, local, for OFL president, and he received an outstanding 36% support. Now you might think, well, he didn't win, but 36% support for an outsider, for a rank and file activist to run for the highest leading body in the province of Ontario is a real indicator of a, a thirst, a hunger for change. And our very own Kurt Young, who spoke earlier, ran for vice president and received an astounding 34% support. It was his first OFL convention and he, he received a third of the convention support. It's fantastic. <laughs> So since, out of a thousand delegates, I should mention, from every affiliated union in the Ontario Federation of Labour. So there is a thirst and hunger for change, but we have to remember that in order to make that change, we need folks who are part of the labour movement, rank and file, to join with us in that fight so we can fight for a better labour movement that represents all workers, not just unionized workers, but all workers. Solidarity. Thank you. Woo! Solidarity. Okay, sisters and brothers, comrades and friends. Finally, one more special treat. Singing the visionary ballad, Imagine, by John Lennon, is our own YC Lee. As I mentioned earlier, he's an operatic tenor and a member of the No Pride and Policing Coalition. So here's YC Lee singing, Imagine. Only sky. Imagine and all the people living for today. Oh, imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to. Nothing to kill or die for And no religion to Imagine all the people Living a life in peace Ooh, You may say I'm a dreamer but I'm not the only one I hope someday you'll join us And the world will be as one Imagine no possessions I wonder if you can No need for greed or hunger A brotherhood of man Imagine all the people Sharing all the world You, know, you may say I'm a dreamer 
but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. Okay, a special thanks to everyone who participated in this rally. Please consider buying a subscription to Social Action newspaper. You will find it there. Uh, also, copies on our tables, only $25 for one year, delivered to your door. Just fill out the form at the display table. And if you would like to talk to us about joining SA, write to Socialist Action, Canada at gmail.com, or just give us a call at 647 9861917 that's 647 9861917 so once again also if you if you like uh, the rally today we also have many things happening we have uh, a, a web what do you call it web webcast webcast, webcast <laughs> on social action youtube channel every thursday night so you can always go there and for the details just visit www.socialsaction.ca so in the meantime, sisters and brothers, please stay safe, stay healthy, and be active. And thanks again for coming. Woo!